power corrupts, no matter whether it's Egypt or Tunisia or India. So power crazy people must be viewed with a special interest. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis, a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. Egypt protests, Obama impatient for credible transition. Bolivian President Evo Morales flees food price protest. Microsoft Internet Explorer 9 web browser goes live. Custody of U.S. man Raymond Davis extended in Pakistan. India and Pakistan agree to resume peace talks once again. Burmese Rohingya refugees rescued in India's Andamans. Another news in detail. Egypt protests Obama impatient for a credible transition. U.S. President Barack Obama says the Egyptian government has yet to put forward a credible, concrete and unequivocal path to democracy. He said Egyptians remain unconvinced that the government is serious about a genuine transition to democracy. Egypt's President Mubarak has said the plans to stay in office until September's polls, but pledged to hand over some powers. Anti-government protesters have reacted angrily to Mubarak's address. The Egyptian people have been told that there was a transition of authority, but it is not yet clear that this transition is immediate, meaningful or sufficient, said Mr. Obama. The Egyptian government must put forward a credible, concrete and unequivocal path towards genuine democracy and they have not yet seized that opportunity, he said. In his nationally televised address earlier, President Mubarak had said he would delegate some powers to Vice President Omar Suleiman, but the details remained unclear. His comments confounded earlier reports that he was preparing to stand down immediately. After the speech, Mr. Obama convened a meeting with his national security team at White House. Bolivian President Evo Morales flees food price protest. Bolivian President Evo Morales has abandoned a public event in the face of an angry protest over food shortages and price rises. Mr. Morales was due to address a parade to commemorate the colonial era uprising in the mining city of Oruro. But he and his team left the city to avoid a violent demonstration by miners throwing dynamite. There have been also protests in other Bolivian cities over the shortage of sugar and other basic foodstuffs. Mr. Morales cut short his visit and returned to La Paz after protesters set off explosions close to where he was prepared to give a speech in Oruro, the capital of his home province in western Bolivia. The government took the decision not to respond to shameful provocations of this kind, presidential spokesman Ivan Kanilas said. Advance the rights of the Egyptian people, a meaningful dialogue between the government and its citizens, and a path of political change that leads to a future of greater freedom and greater opportunity and justice for the Egyptian people. Now, ultimately, the future of Egypt will be determined by the Egyptian people. Microsoft Internet Explorer 9 web browser goes live. Microsoft has said the latest version of its Internet Explorer web browser puts it ahead of competitors like Google and Firefox. The software giant, which is losing market share, made this bold claim as it unveiled what is known as the release candidate of Internet Explorer 9. This is the final test drive for the new browser, a chance to catch any last-minute bugs before its debut. Internet Explorer 9 has been downloaded 25 million times during beta testing. Privacy and speed are being highlighted as two of the features that set Internet Explorer 9 apart. 
This release is one that is playing catch up on past releases, but it leapfrogs everything and now you see the other folks on the back foot trying to catch up with us. Dean Hekmovich, corporate vice president of Internet Explorer, told reporters. With this release, you are seeing innovation after innovation that folks are catching up to. Hardware acceleration was something no one was talking about until we did it. No one else was talking about privacy and tracking until we did it. According to the web analytics company Net Applications, Internet Explorer lost more than 6 percentage points of user share in the past 12 months. At the end of January, the browser hit an historic low with 56 percentage of users using Internet Explorer. Custody of U.S. man Raymond Davis extended in Pakistan. A Pakistani judge has extended by another 14 days the detention of a U.S. citizen arrested for killing two men in Lahore last month. Raymond Davis appeared in Lahore High Court amid tight security. He was remanded to judicial custody. The court has ordered the Pakistani government to clarify whether Mr. Davis enjoys diplomatic immunity. The U.S. Embassy says he does and has called for Mr. Davis to be freed. Mr. Davis has admitted that he shot the men but says he acted in self-defense because they were trying to rob him. Correspondents say the dispute over his status has stained relations between the two countries. India and Pakistan agreed to resume peace talks. India and Pakistan say they have agreed to resume peace talks on all issues. Peace moves were put on hold after Pakistan-based militants attacked Mumbai in 2008, although the sites have met a number of times in the past year. The nuclear armed rivals' decision to discuss key issues in the dispute came after top officials met at a summit in Bhutan at the weekend. Pakistan's foreign minister will visit India by July to review progress in the dialogue, a joint statement said. Before then, senior officials from both sides will get together to discuss range of issues which have harmed relations for decades. They have agreed to resume dialogue on all issues following the spirit of the Thimpu meeting between the two prime ministers, a joint statement said, referring to weakened talks in the Bhutanese capital. Correspondents say no one is expecting swift progress on issues at the heart of the dispute. The two countries will work to narrow the trust deficit so that we can discuss all bilateral issues, Indian Minister of External Affairs spokesman Vishnu Prakash told the reporters. We are picking up the threads again. We have to move forward step by step. We are taking baby steps. Pakistan's Prime Minister Yusuf Raza Gilani said he welcomed the important decision taken by both Pakistan and India to resume a full spectrum of dialogue. Burmese Rohingya refugees rescued in India's Andamans. More than 90 Rohingya refugees have been found by police in India's Andaman and Nicobar Islands. All of them were starving and seriously dehydrated. Police said 25 have been admitted to hospital. The refugees told police they had set adrift with little food and water in a boat without an engine by the Thai Navy. Thailand has denied the charge. Thousands of Rohingyas, a Muslim minority group in Burma, have fled to the country to escape persecution. An estimated 2 lakh Rohingyas live in refugee camps in Bangladesh. Many of them, especially those living in unofficial camps, attempt to escape poor conditions by attempting to get to Southeast Asia by sea. We found them in a village in the Kar and Nicobar Islands where they were desperately searching for food and water. Police officer George Lalu told the reporters in a telephone interview from Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Rohingyas said they were trying to enter Malaysia illegally through Thailand with the help of agents before they were caught by the Thai Navy, he said. Doctors and the hospital told the reporters that they had been at sea without food and water for more than a week. 
In a statement recorded by the police in Car and Nicobar, one of the refugees said they were kept in a dark room with minimum food for about a week. After that, they said they were set adrift in open sea in an engineless boat with minimal rations and water.